Beloved in Christ, I bless you all in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I invite you into the second day of worship in this holy week. Before we proceed further, let us pause for a word of prayer. Shall we pray? A most loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for giving us another day in this holy week to come into your holy presence, O oh Father, to worship you and to meditate upon your holy word in the second day of this holy week. Heavenly Father, we pray that your holy presence continue to be with us and guide us and give us the grace, O oh Father, that we, Lord, meditate your word and receive the spiritual insight that you want us to learn from your word. Speak to us and strengthen us and guide us, even as we worship you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The scripture portion that was taken for the second day's meditation is from St. Mark, chapter 14, verses 3 to 9. St. Mark's Gospel, 14th chapter, from 3 to 9. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of a man known as Simeon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of, her, of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wage and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor will, you will always have with you and you can help them any time you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. I tell you the truth, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. This is the word of the Lord. So the topic for our brief meditation is the anointing of Jesus. The anointing of Jesus. Probably that was an evening time in Bethany village and Jesus was invited by a leper called Simeon. And we see that in verse 6 here. Arrangements for food are going on. Perhaps this Simeon was a leper, might have received healing from Jesus Christ. As you can find it in Mark chapter 1, verse 41. Maybe out of gratitude, this banquet was uh, hosted by him <clears throat> and he has invited some of his friends and along with them, it was Jesus whom he has invited. And uh, in the eastern countries, any guest comes into the house, there was a tradition of uh, sprinkling scent on them. Even that we find, even in our own country, at some auspicious occasions like marriage and uh, some other uh, functions, the scent is being sprinkled upon the guests. Even whenever, uh, when everyone was getting ready for dinner, it was Mary. Verse 3, we see that Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. It's also called as alabaster, ox or alabasteron. In fact, this is a name of a place in Egypt which manufactures such bottles and perfumes. The perfume was extracted from a very rare flower which has a very unique fragrance and it is very expensive perfume in the East. With that cost, a laborer, a laborer can live for uh, one year. It's like a one year's wage for a laborer. So that expensive perfume or alabaster box was 
bought by Mary to anoint Jesus. When we look into the anointing act of Mary, we can find four choices that are open to Mary uh, in really pouring down this alabaster upon uh, the pure nod upon Jesus Christ. The first choice could be this. She could have used it entirely on herself, <clears throat> which is what many do with the alabaster boxes of their hearts and of their lives. She could have used that, used that for herself entirely. Just like uh, many people in this world, they have life and uh, they use it entirely for themselves without any thought of God or without giving any thought of really living for Him and for His will. So we have, we see that Mary has this choice. The second thing is this, she could have poured it on some loved ones uh, and also some on Jesus. She would have divided that, you know, she would have poured little on Jesus and kept for herself only to be used for some of, some of the other uh, best friends she might have uh, have in her life. So we see here that she exclusively brought this uh, perfume for Jesus, not to be shared with anybody, but exclusively for Jesus. And here we see that the focus of her worship, the focus of her devotion, and her love towards Jesus is so great that she wants to give that precious ointment or perfume to Jesus and Jesus alone. Likewise, even in our lives, the focus for our love and for our devotion should be Jesus and Jesus alone. Out of that love, we can really uh, love even our own family and our neighbors and all of this. But the first priority in loving is loving our God, our Creator, our Savior. And that's what Mary teaches us by pouring this pure you know, nod or the perfume exclusively which uh, that she has kept it for Jesus. Thirdly, she could have distributed it between uh, herself and others, either including or excluding uh, Jesus as a part. This choice again, you know, she could have distributed it to herself and her friends and uh, without any thought of really giving to Jesus. Jesus could be the last priority, but no, she has, again we see here that she has done it exclusively for Jesus, for nobody around. And that is, that shows how uh, dedicated and how much she loved Jesus. Uh, fourthly, there was the choice which she actually made, namely the devoting of it exclusively to Jesus. And this shows that that her love and her, her dedication and her um, reverence towards God is so great, towards Jesus is so great that nobody around could, could really shake her or stop her. We see that people around began to grumble, says, why this waste? Why this waste? It could, have, it could have been sold and give it to the poor. And they have spoken it very harshly to her. You know, in spite of all the harsh words and uh, the strong opposition of the people around, she focused only pouring her perfume on Jesus. And that's what we got to learn the lesson that in spite of all the hurdles and all the oppositions, all the persecutions maybe, and all the hindrances for us to live for God, nothing should really broke our focus in loving our God, our Lord, and following Him with dedication and commitment to rever Him and to uh, press forward with an unwavering faith and love towards Him. And also we see that there are four motives here that Mary, we can learn from Mary, even as she gave this pure uh, perfume or not to Jesus. You know, four motives behind mm, this lovely 
uh, offering of Mary. The first thing is this, her reverence, her reverence. In the sublime manhood, she had recognized the incarnate Godhead and worshipped him, and worshipped him. She, she, we, we see here that there is a, a, a special revelation maybe for her to recognize the Godhood of Christ and worship him as God, as God. And secondly, we see that the gratitude, her gratitude, while others seemed blind, you know, her tear-filled eyes have seen that the way to the throne was via the cross. That's what we see in the, uh, in the act of Mary. You know, she poured that ointment upon Jesus. And as Jesus said, don't hinder her or don't stop her because she, by pouring this, she is preparing me for my burial. You know, she could foresee what is going to happen with her Lord. And, and that thought might have really filled her with so awe and with so reverence and with so gratitude that she thought, this is my last chance to really pay my real tributes or real gratitude towards uh, the one who really gave me the life and the words of life. Thirdly, we see that her faith, her faith, you know, convinced, uh, we see that uh, convinced uh, faith in him, confessed faith in him as the son of God and the savior and king, you know, she really looked beyond what other people are seeing. She saw Christ as the son of God, as a savior, as a king, and therefore she has anointed him with this precious and very costly and expensive perfume because a king alone can receive this kind of perfume or anointment. No ordinary person can really afford this or can receive it. So in that way, she recognized the kingship of Jesus Christ. She recognized the saviorhood of Jesus Christ. She recognized the deity or the divinity of Christ by this act, by doing this act. Fourthly, her motive is the behind the, the her fourth motive is her love, love that surpasses all other motives, all other motives. The motives of the people around her are a bit selfish. You know, they thought it is waste. They thought it is really, uh, you know, she is really wasting her resource, or could be given to the poor around. You know, but we see here that the love that she has towards Christ is so exclusive that what all that should belong to her Lord, her God, her Savior, her King, need to be given to Him and Him alone, not to be shared with anybody. Here we see the dedication and the focus of our worship and our love, our faith, our gratitude and our reverence. We see that. There also four traits that we can really uh, learn from our character is this, the qualitative, uh, you know, uh, lessons that we can learn from her anointing act is this, that lip worship is not enough. We must give. We must give. She could have come there and uh, she could have really verbally, she could have praised Jesus and uh, adored him and uh, spoken so good of him and, uh, you know, all these things without offering anything or anything from her life or uh, uh, from her life. But we see here that lip worship is not enough. Therefore, she bought the precious gift. The cheapest was not enough because she has chose to give the best, best, the very best that she can really afford in all her lifetime. And the, the, the real best gift and the, and the, and the real uh, inexpensive gift that you and I can really give to God is our own life and our own soul, our own heart. That is the most expensive gift that God has given to us and kept in us. And this, we cannot waste it in this world and waste upon others, you know, uh, for unnecessary uh, things that doesn't bring glory to God. But here we see that Mary really uh, gave the best and we are called to give our best of time, of talent, and of our resources, and everything that God gave us, the best need to be returned to our master, not the cheapest. Thirdly, we see the third motive, a part was not enough. 
must be given all you know everything should be given in in totality you know in fullness a part is not enough you know partial submission partial obedience partial you know love or partial faith or partial reverence or gratitude is not enough it should be full the fullness in our love in our dedication in our reverence in our commitment in our uh, you know witness everything should be complete when we really give to god because christ has completely given himself to us because he loved us so much that he poured down his life for you and me and therefore we cannot really withhold any reservations but when it comes to giving to god regarding our lives our talents our resources no second thought but we got to really give it to god ephesians 5 1 and 2 says the same follow god's example therefore as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love just as christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to god christ loved us so much that he emptied himself and he gave himself completely to us it is his love that moved him to give himself completely to us and that's what god is expecting from you and me so not a part but a whole life of yours your whole heart your soul need be need to be committed into the hands of the lord fourth thing is this the unbroken uh, was not enough it need to be broken and poured down you see when mary bought the bottle the alabaster box she broke that and she poured everything upon the head and the feet of jesus so unbroken is not enough need to be broken down you know god loves the the broken uh, you know uh, life and broken hearts therefore you know many things really break us but let us bring this brokenness to christ because christ our god loves the broken hearted and he heals the wounds of the broken hearted people and therefore we are called to uh, you know give our lives to god in a broken situation because none of us are you know here without uh, getting broken one or the other way we are broken but we try to mend ourselves we try to you know fix ourselves that could not be done then that cannot be done only christ is there to fix us and let us bring this brokenness you know to christ because he is the one who brings uh, who really uh, receives the uh, the brokenness and gives the beauty out of brokenness gives the beauty out of brokenness that is the act of christ on the cross his body was broken for us therefore we are receiving that beauty of salvation that beauty of his forgiveness of compassion and a wall of the love of god that is being poured upon us therefore dear uh, dear beloved uh, as we meditate upon the act of anointing of jesus in this time we see that it is mary who really set up a wonderful you know uh, example for us in giving her the best uh, you know in her uh, in her choices how in her motives and in her uh, uh, you know traits we see that she has given the best and we are called also to give the best even as we uh, observe this passion tide we may be having we should be having a special gift to give to god each year as we enter the lent and passion tide we need to find some special offering of ourselves and our gifts in prayer in fasting and alms giving and give it to christ because it is something worth giving to god which will be definitely recognized and uh, uh, given a wonderful you know um, uh, blessing by the lord and to his people we see that when christ said this now when christ received this anointing he said and wherever this gospel is preached the act that she has done to me will be also be remembered in memory of her and that is the great um, reward christ has given to her even as we commit our lives unto christ in our, in all our, f- our fullness let us always be assured that christ is there to recognize and reward us 
one day even as we stand before him god bless us and give us his grace that we may continue to offer our lives as a living sacrifice and uh, as a pure, uh, as 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 a, as a precious perfume at the feet of jesus only to bring forth the fragrance of gospel of witness to the people among whom we are living and that could be done through our life of prayer our life of devotion and dedication unto the lord may the lord bless these words to us shall we look to, look to the lord in prayer Our most loving heavenly father we thank you and praise you lord for this blessed time thank you lord for giving us the grace that we could really ponder upon the anointing of thine by thy daughter mary yes lord she has indeed set us a great example in giving the best to you our father in spite of all the oppositions in spite of all the our lord discouraging words around she focused to really give the best to you and to worship you and to really honor you of father give us the grace of father even as we live in the midst of uh, these situations where even we find a lot of hindrances and we find a lot of uh, uh, lord uh, obstacles in worshiping you heavenly father give us the grace that we may focus our worship upon you and you alone and give our best our our, our very life our heart our soul into your hands only to be blessed and rewarded by you and protected by you we just thank you and praise you for this beautiful day we once again pray dear lord for your gracious hand continue to be with upon all our families of oh father of this church and everybody who are listening to this message let your fatherly hands oh lord and fold them of oh father secure them under the wings of grace even as we battle with this corona virus around us we pray dear lord that your that your precious blood and your holy fire I uh, may always shield your people and heal your people and uh, strengthen your people of oh father we commit ourselves into mighty hands and our families and our nation and the entire world for your grace and for your lord uh, touch of healing and restoration we also remember those who are really lord suffering with this virus in hospitals and in their own home quarantines and also people who are really losing their lives lord i pray have mercy upon your people have mercy upon your people of oh father heal your land forgive your people and visit your people of oh father through your word and through your spirit and lord assure your healing into the lives of your people of oh father i commit ourselves and our all our beloved dear ones who are listening to this program bless them all together we give you all the glory and honor to holy precious name in jesus name we pray amen may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with each and every one of us both now and forevermore amen god bless you and be assured of our prayers we are praying for you may the lord's care and protection be always with you and your families god bless you King of my life I crown you